hello and uh, so welcome back to the course on algorithms uh, in the previous uh, videos we have seen that any comparison based sorting algorithm would require at least uh, n log n number of comparisons and uh, we have seen two algorithms which achieves this uh, a lower bond one is namely the mode sort uh, which was in worst case uh, took at, uh, at most n log n number of comparisons uh, but we said that it requires an additional array to sort the given sequence of numbers. Then we have also seen say uh, saw a uh, randomized uh, quick sort algorithm uh, which on average uh, uh, took n log n time but in worst case it was order n square. But the good thing uh, about this algorithm was that it did not require uh, any additional space. Okay, But we have also seen that we can force the quick sort algorithm to run in order you know, n log n time by choosing the pivot appropriately namely we chose the pivot as the median of the uh, n element using the find rank algorithm uh, so that uh, the quick sort algorithm actually runs in n log n so in this video we are going to see one more uh, um, algorithm for sorting uh, which is known as the heap sort uh, so this in worst case uh, will work in uh, n log n uh, but would not require any additional space this uh, this particular algorithm will have both the nice properties of randomized quick sort uh, as well as um, you know, the merge sort algorithm so even though the quick sort algorithm we were able to run in n log n in worst case we said uh, since we are using the median as an intermediate uh, intermediate algorithm to compute the period uh, the constants involved in worst case are very high numbers so when you do heap sort we will also discuss what is known as a priority queue uh, we have seen what is a stack data structure which uh, does pu uh, push and pop uh, basically add and delete operation but it follows first in lost out um, strategy and we have also seen uh, the queue uh, which also uh, supports uh, nq and dq operation so here the last in is uh, the last out is the uh, operation uh, so in uh, uh, in this uh, video we will also see a priority queue uh, it means that every time when you add an element uh, we are going to add that element with some priority associated with each element and we, when we delete uh, we either delete the minimum priority element or the maximum priority element so if you delete the minimum priority element then it's called the minimum priority queue if you are deleting the maximum element uh, then it's called as the uh, maximum priority queue so the heap is one data structure which will support both uh, uh, the add and uh, uh, min or maximum uh, deletion uh, in order log n time. Okay, so we will get started with uh, so what the understanding of so what is a uh, binary heap. Uh, we will look at an example and also uh, show that uh, the height of a binary heap is order log n. So in this video, we are going to study about uh, binary heaps. Before we begin, let's uh, quickly recap uh, the two data structures that we already studied so one is called as the stack which follows the uh, first in last out or the last in first out uh, principle uh, so the add is called as push and the delete is called as pop in the case of a queue uh, it follows the strategy of first in first out or the last in last out and the add operation is the uh, nq operation and uh, uh, dq is the delete operation so we can generalize this notion of uh, queue into priority queue. When an element is added, uh, a priority is added to uh, every element. And when we are asked to delete, uh, so we are asked to delete either the minimum or the maximum element, uh, element with the maximum priority. So if you delete the minimum uh, priority element, then it's called as the minimum priority queue. And uh, uh, if you are deleting the maximum element, uh, element with the maximum priority, uh, then this is basically called as a maximum priority queue. So we will discuss uh, mainly focus on the uh, minimum priority queue. Uh, it's always easy to implement uh, the maximum priority queue once you know how to implement uh, minimum priority queue. Uh, in this example, in this uh, uh, video, we are going to talk about binary heaps, which are a kind of minimum priority queue, and uh, so we'll see several uh, minimum priorities queues which will be able to do this add and delete operation uh, very efficiently. Uh, in particular, we are going to see in this video that binomial uh, binary heaps uh, will be able to do add and delete min in order log n. 
so let's just quickly try to understand what's a binary here uh, so we uh, without saying without uh, we, will, we will not repeat this we will always focus on the uh, minimum binary here when I say that uh, uh, it's a binary heap we are always referring to the minimum bi binary heap uh, so it's a complete binary tree uh, in which each node is associated with a key uh, yet each node of the tree the value of the key is smaller than or equal to value of its both the children let's look at uh, so there are two main properties one is that it has to be complete uh, binary tree property uh, this is called as the structural property uh, of the binary heap and it has to follow the second property there is a no key value which is called as a priority which is written on every uh, node of the key that keys and those keys should satisfy the property that uh, which is every node should have a value which is smaller than or equal to two of a value that is written on um, uh, two of his children this property is basically uh, we are going to refer to this as the key property let's look at this example so here this is a heap first of all it has to be a complete binary uh, tree before you go to the next level so the previous level so till uh, the till the previous level it has to be a full binary tree and in the last level we have to basically fill the nodes from left to right so that's what makes this uh, tree as a complete binary tree so every time when a, we have to verify that a, a, a heap is a binary heap um, so we have to ensure that it is uh, a complete binary tree and also it satisfies the heap property at every node you can check that 5 is smaller than 26 and 43 26 is smaller than 32 and 29 32 is smaller than 39 and 85 and in the leaf nodes the heap property is anyway satisfied because it doesn't have children so 43 is smaller than 64 and 93 so the heap property it's a complete binary tree and the heap property is satisfied at every node uh, in the binary heap so that's why this is a binary heap so we can also do the level order traversal of the tree and write down the level order tra numbers of for each of these nodes i start with uh, the first one so i give you label zero and i push uh, 26 and 43 into the uh, queue so the first number that comes out is 26 i give the number which is one then i give 43 to number when I uh, DQ 26, I would have added 32 and 29 into the uh, queue. When I look at 43, I would have added for, uh, 64 and 30, 93. So you basically do the travel, uh, level order traversal and each of these nodes you give the level order number. So the 5 gets 0, 26 gets 1, 43 is numbered as 2, uh, 32 the, uh, is numbered as 3 and 29 is numbered as 4. 64 is numbered as 5, 93 is numbered as 6, 37 is numbered as 7 and 85 is numbered as 8. So this, uh, uh, so the, uh, since the tree is a complete binary tree and uh, since we have used this level order traversal, this tree can be represented using an array of length n. So if there are n nodes in the tree, then this uh, uh, entire tree, the complete binary tree, can be represented using an array right so what we're going to do is that we're going to take an array which, which i'm going to call it as h so this h of uh, zero will store the value of uh, the value which is there at the uh, zeroth uh, in, uh, index right so uh, you can write down this uh, array as z uh, h of zero i'm going to store five in h of one i'm going to store whatever is there in uh, H of 1 so which is 26 and H of 2 I am going to store 43 H of 3 is 32 H of 4 is 29 and so on H of 8 at the end will be 85 so what you need is just an array of size n in this case there are nine elements uh, indexing is from 0 to 8 so you just take an array of size 9 and store these values in this order so we're going to store this as uh, in the level order traversal of the tree so uh, we don't have to maintain the tree structure uh, tree structure would require you to require you to um, keep track of the uh, left child pointer of child right child pointer and if you want to go to the parent uh, so you need the parent pointer also right so this everything is implicit here so the entire complete binary tree can be represented using an array and it's easy to see that if you want to uh, go from a node to the parent node you have to do i by 2 
right i minus 1 by 2 so for example if you want to go from 1 to the parent of 1 uh, is 0 so if you just do 1 minus 1 by 2 uh, you go to the parent point 2 minus 1 is 1 so if you go to the if you want to go to the parent just do the integer division right so if you want to go to the parent you take the floor of i minus 1 by 2 in other words you just do the uh, parent is equal to i minus 1 by 2 so right this is only will keep track of the integer part of it which will give you uh, which will help you to go to the parent point for example if you take 8 8 minus 1 is 7 7 by 2 is 2, 3 so you can go to the parent node similarly given a node it is always easy to find the left child pointer and the right child pointer uh, if you are at the ith node the left child pointer can be computed by looking at 2i plus 1 and the right child pointer can be computed by 2i plus 2 for example if you are at level 1 the uh, node 1 then uh, so the left child of it is 2 plus 1 uh, which is 3 and uh, the right child of it is uh, uh, 2 into 1 plus 2 which is 4 right similarly you can do the computations i repeat if you want to go to the parent node you have to choose, uh, just do i minus 1 by 2 and if you want to go to the left uh, left child uh, you can go to the left child by looking uh, going to the pointer 2i plus 1 and if you want to go to the right uh, right child you have to uh, go to 2i plus 2 so if you just uh, this array actually represents the entire complete binary tree with a nice property that if you want to the left child it's easy. in order one you can compute you have to just go to 2i plus 1 if you want the right child you have to just go to 2i plus 2 and if you want to go to the parent node you have to just go to i minus 1 byte so uh, this is uh, the binary tree is represented pictorially by using this but when we implement this binary heap uh, we're going to use this array representation in each of these array nodes we're going to in each of the uh, array node we are going to store only the priorities so because of the complete binary uh, tree property uh, so there's a nice property that the height of this complete binary tree will be theta of log of n where n is the total number of nodes in the binary heap let's quickly look at the proof for this let us consider a complete binary tree with n number of nodes okay so the complete binary tree will look like um, see except for the last node all the if you look at the rest of the tree it has to be full binary tree and in the last level the node has to we should need to fill the uh, nodes from left to right if h is the height of the tree then the the last level the height of this nodes is uh, the level of these nodes is equal to h and all the nodes the previous level will have a level h minus 1 and uh, the root node will have a level 0 and uh, this is at level 1 so we need uh, we know that in uh, uh, um, if the there is only one node with uh, level 0 there are exactly two nodes with uh, level 1 in general if l is the level then uh, you know, there will be um, 2 to the power l nodes and uh, so in the h minus 1 there will be 2 to the power h minus 1 number of nodes so if h is if n is the total number of nodes in the complete binary tree then this has to be greater than i will exclude the nodes in the last level if i exclude the nodes in the last level then in the h minus 1 number of uh, uh, levels the total number of nodes will be 2 to the power i where i is going from 0 to h minus 1 i have excluded the nodes which are there in the last level there will be at least one node that's why this hn is greater than uh, this number and this number we know that is equal to 2 to the power h uh, minus 1 so which implies that n is greater than 2 to the power h minus 1 which essentially means that h is smaller than n plus 1 2 to the power h is smaller than n plus 1 which essentially means that h is smaller than log of n plus 1 so this gives an upper bound that height of any complete binary tree will be smaller than log of n plus 1 so we can also similarly get the uh, upper bound for the n in terms of uh, h so we would say that n is certainly uh, smaller than or equal to i will include uh, uh, so i will try to count all the nodes if assuming that all the nodes are full so if uh, as in the last node the number of nodes can be either one or it can be 2 to the power h 
so uh, so if i look at the summation to the power i where i is going from 0 to h that means that there's a full binary tree with uh, the last node completely filled but in the complete binary tree the last node uh, need not be completely filled so the number of nodes in a complete binary tree whose height is h is smaller than or equal to summation of i is equal to 0 to h 2 to the power h so this summation is, is equal to 2 to the power h plus 1 minus 1 this would imply that 2 to the power h plus 1 is greater than or equal to n plus 1 so if i take logarithm on both sides what i would get is that h plus 1 is greater than or equal to log of n plus 1 in other words h is greater than uh, log of n plus 1 so if i plug these two things together so what i'm going to get is h is smaller than log of n plus 1 but h is also greater than or equal to log of n plus 1 minus 1 so if i ignore all the constants i can write that h is uh, theta of uh, log of n which means that if i start with a complete binary tree uh, then the height of the complete binary tree is uh, order log n so in this video we have seen what's a uh, binary heap we defined a binary heap as a complete binary tree uh, which uh, with the property that uh, each node will have satisfy a uh, heap property so namely at every node the value of the node is smaller than or equal to uh, value of his children uh, so we have also seen that uh, since it's a complete binary tree there is a structure associated with the binary heap uh, which enforces uh, that the height of the tree uh, is theta of log of n we will use this fact and uh, um, do several operations uh, uh, in the next video whose complexity will be uh, order log n which is the height of the uh, binary heap.